kill me. I don't think that you should come with me to New York. <laughs> what? Why? Why not? Because I think we should take a break. Uh, a break? Mm -hmm. Why? There's so much, like we've spoken before, that Kate is dealing with, and there's so much that Toby could do for her, and it's still never going to be enough because she's not enough for herself. So she really feels and it, like... And it goes the other way. Absolutely. For Toby as well. Absolutely. This giant clown who uses comedy and uh, his sense of humor as a shield and his armor, and and he clearly, clearly has not come to fully love his, himself either. Right. It's very layered because... She doesn't have, she does have self-worth issues and she lacks in self-confidence in that way. She has a lot of herself together, but the weight is obviously a huge issue for her and it's gotten in between being intimate with Toby. Mm -hmm. It's also an issue that self-worth and all of these things that he could do for her, it's still never enough. And that, damn it, she's finally decided, like, I have to do this for myself because no one else is ever going to be able to do it or fix it mm -hmm. aside from from herself. And that's the lesson that Toby is also learning on the flip side is that you cannot you cannot attempt to make grand personality choices or life changes on someone else's behalf. You have to do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're not doing it for yourself because it's something that you really want to do, it's never going to work no matter how you you try to go about it. No, you can't fix people. So I had to let, I had to let, she had to let him go. And not because she doesn't love him, she finally found a really amazing man. She's torn because she's like, if I let him go, will I ever get him back? Or will I ever have that kind of love? Or will anyone ever do these things for me again? You know what they say about that? Tell me. Let it go, and if it comes back. It's a boomerang. It's a boomerang. Turns out Toby is a boomerang. <laughs> We are going to skewer our hot dogs, and then we're going to roast them on an open furnace flame. And then once they get all toasty and warm, we're going to wrap it in cheese. Well, I think when you see the Thanksgiving episode and you understand what happened to this family when they were eight, and then you see them in the present day, and everything kind of is the same. Pilgrim Rick and the 3.4-mile <laughs> hike and all this, and where it comes from, that idea of tradition uh, hmm. that keeps them together. And even in the present day, how Miguel wants to be a part of it, I think is so endearing because it is such a shared experience, this family of car accident to 3.4-mile hike to staying in the grungiest looking place and not really having a good meal, but making do with what they had and having fun despite all of the, the, the things that have happened on this one particular Thanksgiving day. One of the things also that, you know, we keep trying to explore is, um, you know, what, what's authentic in the connections and then where some of that is lost or broken. I think one of the things that about the Thanksgiving episode that's so interesting is that, you know, the this, those traditions, some of them, it, they obviously haven't been explored or really investigated recently. There's mm -hmm. a lot of things that, okay, we do these things, we do these rituals, or we have these traditions, but we haven't really thought about w whether they still resonated or meaningful. And I think that's what's interesting episode. And by telling the story the way it's told, you know, there's a real evocation of that. It's like, wait, these things were all based in something that was a really meaningful time for this family when they were really together. And those markers in time, like time itself being this, this uh, concept that we've all agreed upon. Mm -hmm. and, and we're obsessed with it, not having enough time, how much time we have left, all mm. these things. But the rituals that we, whether they're annual or, or based around holidays, give us a way to, to mark who we were and who we are now mm. and, and where we want to be and, and all those things. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that, folks. Just some very fast-moving cold front. Nothing to worry about. 
but please remain in your seats with your seat belts fastened. <laughs> Sorry. I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> Me too. Kate has it in her mind that she wants to staple her stomach because she goes on this plane ride to uh, Connecticut, right, or New York, New York for family. Thanksgiving with the family. And she buys two tickets because she feels like she's gonna spill over into the other seat and, you know, somebody's gonna have issues with it. So she's just tired, she's just fed up. And she does have this really great interaction with this woman who's obviously judging her based on her size and already pissed off. And then they have this really beautiful moment where she's like, needs her when there's crazy turbulence and Kate comes to her rescue and she admits that she has a terrible marriage and she's unhappy. And it doesn't matter, again, it goes back to, it doesn't matter what size you are or what issues you have, we all are trying to figure it all out and different things make us happy or unhappy. And so she just comes to this realization like, okay, maybe I need a quick fix. And maybe that's what the stapling of the stomach is gonna do. And she <laughs> just barges into Thanksgiving and she's like, oh, okay, this is what I've decided. And maybe that's partly because of Toby and that, okay, if I can do this quick fix and get thin, then I'll be happy. But it's not about that because it's never about the food. It's never about what we fill the void with. But, right, we only do what we think we know is best, so. I think one of the things that works really well with your characters that, that out of her own insecurities, she has certain expectations. Like I think in that scene, that woman immediately makes Kate feel insecure, sure. you know, right? I mean, her judgment in the sense that, okay, here's this woman that looks like she's got it together. She's, she's thin, she's good looking enough. She seems very put together. She's judgmental. Right. So I think that probably always makes Kate insecure. Oh, definitely. And then when it comes out when, you know, in this life and death moment is this woman doesn't have it together at all. Right. I mean, she's she's miserable. Ugly, she's ugly also inside. the person that she was in love with or whoever's not in love with her. Right. You know, so that I think those things are those things are really good because if you know you you play all those complex aspects of your character, you're not afraid to behave badly or be insecure. Do that. Otherwise, I think it would be just false. <laughs>